So we really wanted to emphasize that today and really wanted to talk about that today. So we want to start our presentation off today with workforce preservation. And Dr. Anita Appenfels is going to talk about that and discuss that. And really that term workforce preservation, that's really a business person's description of saying, how are we going to make sure we're taking care of our people? We value our employees and our staff, and we want to make sure we're responding to their needs and we're doing as best possible to communicate with them about how we're going to move this work forward as best possible and as safe as possible. So Dr. Appenfeld, I'll turn it off to you to lead off our presentation. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Mrs. Carter, board members, Dr. Gramercy. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today during this unprecedented time for our school district. Employees are key to any plans to reopen schools. And I'm grateful that employees are our first considerations as we lay out our plans for how to begin the 2020-21 school year. As you know from our meeting last week, we issued a survey to our employees to gather critical information to guide our work toward reopening our schools. I cannot thank enough the more than 1,600 employees from every category and every classification and every site and every school and every department who responded on very short notice. Dr. Appenfels, I'm gonna interrupt you just a moment. Mr. Weaver says he doesn't believe our YouTube is streaming. He was unable to hear you speaking. Uh, and Mr. Weaver, can you unmute just a moment? Mr. Weaver? All right, he's not hearing a streaming. So, and Dr. Grimacy, you're muted. Um, uh, Mr. Eklund, are, are yeah, you? Th yeah, th this, th this, this is Ken Eklund. Um, I can hear it on the stream. I, I, he should be participating in from the, from the meet and not watching the YouTube. Um, the YouTube is going to be delayed slightly. Okay. Um, so the I'm actually watching the YouTube stream right now. Okay. And um, and did so the. Could you hear Dr. Appenfeld? Yeah, uh, yeah, we are. yeah, yeah. I, I've confirmed. I, I think it's probably going to be safest for his bandwidth if he just joins only the meeting and then doesn't bring up the YouTube. That could be the issue that he's having. All right, Mr. Weavy, can you hear us now? I, I think he left. He might be rejoining slightly. He, he has rejoined. Okay. I can hear you now, but uh, I've never had the problem with the YouTube. Uh, I just want to make sure the public is seeing this. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm monitoring it on a computer that is that is presenting the YouTube. And this is Catherine, I am as well. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Appenfeld, thank you for that most heartfelt and impassioned uh, expression of thanks for all of us as well. I'm sorry to have interrupted you. That is okay. So here are a couple of charts. Um, as I shared with you last week, a large majority of our employees are anxious and ready to return to site-based work. You'll see this response reflected on these two charts, the section in green, certified on the left and classified on the right. This is great news for our students. These data also will inform our work around the virtual academy and the availability of teachers to work in that capacity. Of those with concerns about returning to work, child care for school-aged children is, an, is a concern for some, reflected here in red, and personal medical status or the medical status of a close family member in a COVID-19 world is a concern for others, reflected here in gold and blue, respectively. Perhaps the most instructive feedback employees provided was their individual responses to the final question on the survey. And it read, please tell us what we as a district and or school could do to make you feel safe returning to on-campus work. Four clear areas of concern surfaced over and over. One, employees want their colleagues and every student to adhere to established safety protocols, including and specifically the wearing of masks at all times. These requirements are dictated and must be followed and will be enforced. Two, employees, particularly teachers, are concerned that they may not be provided sufficient PPE and cleaning supplies 
or that they will be expected to purchase these on their own. Mr. Barath will address this concern later in the presentation. Three, teachers especially are concerned for how they are going to work full time on site if they have school aged children who may only be in school two days a week. More on this concern in a moment. Four, and finally, employees are concerned about what happens if they are quarantined or test positive for COVID-19. They want to know if they will have to use their own accrued leave so that they continue to be paid if they must be away from work for a time period. And while this is a complicated question and very case dependent, I will provide general information in a subsequent slide. In our plan that we present today, we address one of the significant concerns expressed by the percent of employees with concerns about returning to on-site work. And that is concerns about school-aged children of employees on virtual instruction days. To that end, our principals will be given the flexibility to reassign appropriate personnel so that employees' children will be able to accomplish their three virtual learning days at school. If we don't have teachers available to teach, we cannot serve our children. If we do not have personnel to drive bus buses or serve meals or process employment recommendations, we are not able to serve our students. This provision addresses this significant concern from 13% of our certified employees. Second, principals also will be given flexibility to reassign appropriate employees as needed to ensure continuity of instruction for students should a teacher be quarantined or otherwise away from school, thus limiting the movement of substitutes from school site to school site in an environment where we are charged with limiting the number of visitors and others permitted inside our schools. Our employees, and rightfully so, have many what if questions with regard to their own personal situations and there are no easy answers. They want to know if they may have to use their own accrued leave. They want to know who's going to have to pay for the sub. And on the question of them using their own accrued leave, the answer is maybe, depending on the specific situation. What is different as we begin school in the fall is that there is no more state emergency sick leave, which permitted employees at high risk or living with someone high risk to receive state paid leave. That leave expired at the end of the 2019-2020 school year. The federal leave that remains in effect until the end of December provides leave for specific quarantine, symptomatic or positive cases, or for cases where childcare centers may be closed. Depending on the circumstances, that leave may or may not be 100%. We will be heavily dependent in individual cases on the guidance of the director of our local health department, whose direction may provide some relief in certain situations. And our evolving list of frequently asked questions about employee leave should be posted for employee review later this week. Employees also want assurance that they understand the systems and processes that will guide whether a student or employee is sent home, when or if they or their coworkers may be quarantined, whether they will or will not be informed of who may be infected, when or whether a class or an entire school may be temporarily shut down because of a case, cases or an outbreak of COVID-19, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services has issued a July 14th revision to its reference guide for suspected, presumptive, or confirmed cases of COVID-19. While this guide cannot outline every single circumstance, it provides excellent initial guidance for school district employees and administrators on processes and procedures. Embedded throughout this document is a requirement for significant reliance on guidance from the director of the local health department. The health department director will guide us on a case by case basis on how we communicate and notify employees, parents and the public. Should we have a single case of COVID-19 or an outbreak? 
The health department will guide any contact tracing required. And it is the health department director who is in the position to order the closure of a classroom or an entire building or an entire campus. We must all keep in mind that an employee's medical information, including a diagnosis of COVID-19, is confidential under the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act and state law. Coworkers and others who may have had direct contact with a COVID positive employee may be told that there's been a confirmed case of COVID-19 within the workplace, and they may be given other general information to help them assess the risk of infection, but the infected employee's identity may not be disclosed, and similar protections are in place for students. In summary, there are no easy answers to this pandemic for our employees but I have confidence that we will work together through these challenges, all with the mission of serving our students and their educational lives.